The Chinese phrase Kung Fu actually has virtually nothing to do with martial arts. And that's a really cool thing. Now, when you think Kung Fu, what you probably think of is a mostly unarmed form of Chinese hand-to-hand -hand combat. You might think of Bruce Lee, you might think of the phrase Young Grasshopper, and you might think, of course, of the film Kung Fu Panda. But the really interesting thing is that in Chinese etymology, the phrase Kung Fu actually has nothing at all to do with fighting. Now, I am not an expert on the Chinese language, and the etymologies are a little complex, but there does seem to be a general consensus that the phrase Kung Fu means something like skill that is acquired through diligent practice over time. If you're looking for the Chinese term that means something more like martial art or fighting art, the word for that would be Wushu. But by itself, Kung Fu is actually a term that means something much broader and much deeper than anything having to do with swords, fists, or Chinese films. The first place I ran across this idea was actually in two martial arts films, both of them, interestingly enough, starring Jackie Chan. The first of these was The Forbidden Kingdom, which also incidentally stars Jet Li. This movie is about a teenage boy who is accidentally transported back into the legendary past of China, where he teams up with a silent monk who is Jet Li, and an old drunk, which is Jackie Chan, and the quest of the story is to rescue the Monkey King. And obviously, of course, there has to be some kind of training montage because there's this teenage boy who needs to learn Kung Fu. So this is what Jackie Chan's character tells him during that training montage. <laughs> Kung Fu, hard work over time to accomplish skill. Painter can have kung fu, or the butcher who cuts meat every day with such a skill, his knife never touches bone. <laughs> Learn the form, but seek the formless. Hear the soundless. Learn it all, then forget it all. Learn the way, then find your own way. A musician can have kung fu. Or the poet who paints pictures with words and makes emperors with this too is Kung Fu. So notice that as soon as Kung Fu means something like hard work over time to accomplish great skill, then it starts applying across a huge variety of domains. As Jackie Chan's character says, the butcher can have, have Kung Fu, the painter can have Kung Fu. Any skill that is practiced over time with diligent effort can rise to the status of Kung Fu. A mechanic can have Kung Fu, a cook can have Kung Fu. A window washer can have kung fu. A student can have kung fu. A parent can have kung fu. You can have kung fu when you're dealing with interpersonal relationships. You can have kung fu while you're fixing a washing machine. What Jackie Chan's character is saying here is that kung fu is something that does not belong to martial arts. Instead, it's something much more essential, much deeper, that can spread and manifest itself across a variety of domains. In fact, probably across any domain. It also means that next time you see someone doing something totally random, but doing it really well, you can go up to them and say, ah yes, very good kung fu, very good. The second film where I ran across this idea, also with Jackie Chan in it, was the remake of The Karate Kid, with uh, Jaden Smith as the main character. Jackie Chan plays the role of Mr. Han, which is the mentor role similar to Mr. Miyagi in the original Karate Kid. In a way really similar to Mr. Miyagi, Mr. Han has Jaden Smith's character do a bunch of menial tasks that seem totally, totally, totally unrelated until finally he teaches him a similar lesson to what he was saying in the Forbidden Kingdom. Check it on. Miss Han, I already. Check it on. Check it on. I don't have a jacket. Check on. Jack, get on. Strong. Check it on. Firm. Check it off. Remember, always strong. Check it off. Strong. Left foot back. Right feet back. Left feet back. Jacket. Ooh, Focus. Okay. Always concentrate. Left back. Right foot back. Pick up a jacket. Stay. 
Ven a mi jacket. Stop. Hang it up. Hang it up. Hang it up. And attitude. Strike. Hang up and edit you. Harder! Harder! Hey! Good. But no face. Check out! lives in everything we do, Xiao Zhui. He lives in how we put on the jacket, how we take off the jacket. And lives in how we treat people. Everything is Kung Fu. So, first of all, he says something very similar to what he says in The Forbidden Kingdom. Basically, everything is Kung Fu. In The Forbidden Kingdom, what Jackie Chan's character is essentially saying is Kung Fu is not something that belongs solely to martial arts. Instead, it's something that can belong to all kinds of domains of human competence and experience. In the remake of The Karate Kid, Jackie Chan's character takes this idea just one step further, which is not only that Kung Fu is something that uh, doesn't just belong to martial arts, but instead can and should manifest itself across a variety of uh, human competencies and skills, but also that these should actually cross-pollinate. Your Kung Fu in martial arts should manifest itself in other areas, and your Kung Fu in other areas should manifest itself in martial arts. This lesson comes out in the movie in a really subtle but powerful way when Jaden Smith comes home from his first day of training, and his mom asks him, so what did you learn today, hun? And he says, nothing and then he hangs up his jacket. The point of the scene, and I think Jackie Chan's whole point in general when he gives that little speech in the movie, is that your martial arts kung fu should be cross-pollinating and influencing the way you do other things, and vice versa. And the reason for that is because everything is kung fu. Kung fu is something more basic, more fundamental, that can manifest itself in a variety of ways. One of the reasons why this lesson was so important to me was because I happened to watch both those movies while I was learning uh, a variety of Shaolin arts by myself by reading books and watching videos online and replicating them myself. When you teach yourself martial arts, or when you learn martial arts from someone else, uh, it's really good to think about why you're doing it. And when I stopped and thought about why I was doing it, that wasn't necessarily the easiest question to answer. Was it going to make me more competent in a street fight? You know, maybe a little, but probably only marginally. And because I was teaching myself, there would never be a magic ceremony where somebody would hand me a black piece of cloth and say that I had mastered something. I would never get my gold sticker. So, why was I doing it? Well, fundamentally, because I was enjoying it. It was a way to get exercise, I felt like I was connecting with another culture, um, and it was really, really, really cool. Even so, as I continued to practice by myself, I would often ask myself, well, wait a second, Joseph, what is it that you're getting out of this? Why are you doing this? Clearly, you're enjoying it. Clearly, you are getting something out of it. What is it? And I think a large part of that was because I had intuited the lesson that martial arts kung fu, your kung fu at fighting or at any kind of art, uh, is not limited to just that domain. Instead, the kind of skill and competence that you develop through long, diligent practice on anything starts manifesting itself in other areas of your life. And so what I found out is that the Shaolin arts that I was practicing were not really so much about the Shaolin arts. It was partially that, but it was also how it integrated into my whole life, how it became, you know, one star in the whole constellation pattern of my life. It was good by itself, but it also fit in with all the other pieces, and they were cross-pollinating, they were cross-informing each other. I think that that's one of the reasons that, for me, practicing the Shaolin arts was so deep and richly rewarding, because to me, it was never just one thing. Instead, it was a thing that fit in well with everything else. In other words, even though I'll never become an MMA fighter, and I'll probably never have a black belt in any discipline, I was still practicing good kung fu. Hope you enjoyed the video. The real question now is whether you can hit the like and subscribe button with enough care and attention and passion and practice that it can be called good kung fu. I'd also love to hear in the comments below what you see as good kung fu, and if there's an area of your life that you practice that you'd never seen as kung fu before, but now you do because of this video. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.